Hi, it's Canatex here again with the next video in the series about installing and maintaining a Gentoo Linux system. So last time we got to the position where we installed a basic GUI using TWM and we also installed a browser which was Firefox. So today we're going to install uh, the KDE Plasma 5 environment um, but first of all we've got to do a little fix um, when I was preparing for this particular video I found that the keyboard settings I'd used yesterday which basically was a, a cut and paste of the instructions and a, then a quick modification um, I didn't really pay much attention to what I was actually modifying um, and the settings that I've used uh, actually causing problems within within X, the X windows um, whereby sometimes the arrows don't work and sometimes the enter key doesn't work so what I'm going to do is just go through quickly to fi fix that uh, so I've just booted the virtual machine I'll log in, go to the root and modify the keyboard config file which was in etc x11 xallconf.d and it was the 30-keyboard.conf so what I think the problem is, I think there's two problems here actually the first is the driver EVDV, we didn't install that input driver, we installed a driver called libinput so I'm going to put libinput in that place there and also I'm not sure what this comma is doing, whether that's saying um, it can use any keyboard and a QWERTY keyboard or or if it was a typo but I think it was in the in the document that I copied from on the web so I'm going to get rid of that as well because it doesn't look right to me and just leave it as QWERTY because that's that is the variant of the keyboard I'm using so I'm going to save that now go back to my uh, normal user and do start X to start the GUI we've got this problem as usual with the what I believe to be the um, VirtualBox graphics driver so I'm just going to uh, it, this problem is where it doesn't resize the screen correctly so I'm just going to log out of the main login terminal and start X again so that's resized correctly now it always seems to resize on the second attempt if it doesn't manage to do it the first time so now I'm going to try out a quick edit um, Oh, I'll have to become root first of all. Okay, yeah, the key's working now, so that's okay. And I can do insert, which this is a thing that wasn't wor uh, working before. So what I'm going to do is, because these fonts are a little bit small, I want to increase them a little bit. So if I use the... Did I install the eQuery? I can't remember if I did or not now. No, I didn't. Okay. Um, what I want to install, uh, do is to modify one of the flags on uh, X term, which gives us a toolbar which opens up some options for modifying the font size. Now, the reason I was going to use this eQuery tool is quite a good tool for looking up stuff in the um, repository database, but I'm not going to install the package at um, puts that there at the moment. Um, I might do that a little bit later. So another way you can find out um, what uh, package the X term is in, I can do something like emerge minus minus search X term and this will give us some information on any package called X term. Well, it looks like it's actually ser searching for the string X term. So the one I've got installed is this last one. You can see there's a little star next to it. And the bit I was interested in is what uh, section it's in. So it's in X11 terms. So that's the bit I want to know. So I don't want to insert it there. I want to insert it here. And to find out what the this is where the eQuery comes in use, so I could have done this all in one command. Um, in fact, shall I install it now? Um, 
Let me just see something. Just look something up. Just want to double check which package is part. Yeah, it is part of the one I thought it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install uh, this eQuery program. It also installs a couple of other useful uh, tools. Um, one of which I wasn't going to show until we do the update because it's not really required before then. Um, but being as it's got the eQuery in the same package, um, I might as well install it now. So it's called Gen Toolkit. So usual install command minus AV jobs equals six. So there you go, it's not installed. We're going to install it and add it to the world set. Okay, it's done, and it suggests there might be some other tools that could be of interest here, which are all to do with portage. So the tool or the program I'm particularly interested in at the moment, as I say, there's another tool we will be using later on, but the one I'm interested in that's part of this package is called eQuery. And it allows you to interrogate the database. And I wanted to use this one here, uses display the use flags for a package. So you do eQuery, you can type uses or just the U and the name of the package. And you can see it shows us all the available use flags and it also shows us which ones are currently set. So the I means, uh, under the I column, sorry, the plus means that this particular flag is, the package is actually installed with that flag set. And the minus means it's in, the package is installed without that flag set. And the one I'm interested in is, is this toolbar one. The U means... Um, it's, it's the setting that would be activated if the package was reinstalled. So at the moment you can see toolbar's got minus for the pending update and it's got minus for the actual current install which is uh, the issue that I'm going to deal with. I want to activate this. So if I go back to the package.use file and type in toolbar to activate this flag, if I now save that file if I rerun eQuery, it will detect that change. And there you go, you've got the plus under the U column. So it shows the next time that this um, package is installed, this uh, flag will become active. So that means that that minus there will change to an I, uh, change to a plus to show that the package is currently installed with that toolbar. Uh, use flag. So when when you run this eQuery, it's not unfortunately a similar case of just running down and saying, "Oh yeah, all these red ones are the active flags." You have have actually got to check the character in the column just prior to the flag to ensure that it has got a plus under the I column to to prove that it's actually installed. So in this column, I'm going to reinstall xterm. To do that, do emerge xterm. This time I'm going to do minus one AV for one shot. I don't want to re-add it to uh, the world set in case it isn't already in there. It is because we added it in the last video. But for safety's sake, you do, as I said before, you do all your updates and emerges with uh, a one shot flag. So that's minus minus one shot or minus one for short. Um, and then you can't go wrong, basically. You're not going to litter your uh, world set with a load of packages that shouldn't really be added to the world set so that's a trouble with this is a little bit smaller than the white background that's another thing i can do with the toolbar you can invert the background to make the background black rather than white but that yellow character there is an r to show it's going to be rebuilt um, you can see it's in a bright color green anyway so it shows it's already part of the world set even though we specified a one shot and you can see the toolbar is in green and it's got a little star next to it to show that it's going to be changed. So I'll just press enter there to accept that and it'll rebuild it. And then I'll, either I'll have to restart the um, X window session 
to activate that for all the windows or to test it for now I'll just spawn off another Xterm session and that Xterm should have the new settings okay so that's up to date now so if I in this third window type in Xterm we get the um, wireframe to show the size and let us position where we want the window and there you go there's the new window and there's our and menu the toolbar that's appeared and what I shall do is um, enable the reverse video to get the black of the black background and I'll change the font size by I don't know selecting one of these see which one looks like a good size looks like huge is going to be the best bet so I'm not going to uh, carry on doing anything at the moment because there's something else I want to do. So I'm going to quit that and quit the Xterm session. And I'm also going to shut this down now as well because what I want to do is create a copy of um, the state of this machine. Uh, so that I've got, not only have I got a basic Gen 2 system, that's a text only one, I'll also have a basic Gen 2 system with a simple GUI and a browser which is Firefox. So I'm going to do a right click and clone this. I'm going to call it something useful like Gen 2 basic GUI and browser. Click next and make sure it's a full clone and just clone the system just give that a minute or so to duplicate okay that was quite quick yeah that's good so I've got a basic tech system and a basic GUI system now for Gen 2 for any future projects or experimentations I want to do so now I'll restart this um, machine that we're building up and log in as myself and start the X session, the X window, sorry, and okay, there's the failing graphics driver, so we'll just come out of that and restart and there we go so let's move these over a little bit let's make this reverse video make that one reverse video just look be a little bit easier to see the colors and to read things and then the fonts change it to huge so that window's too big for the screen now so I'll just reduce it if you've never used Xterm before the way this window resize works is you left click and hold on this little icon here and then depending on which edge you want to resize, you move the cursor to that edge. So if I wanted to resize the left hand edge, I'm still clicking and holding. I move the cursor over that edge and then as soon as you move it back again, it picks it up and resizes it. And you can do the same with any of those edges. So I've just clicked and held as I'm holding the button down, move it down to the edge I want to resize and as soon as you move in the direction you want to resize as long as you've passed over that edge it will resize it and you can let go and you see the window uh, takes takes that size so let's just resize these two as well huge that's okay Right, so what I might do is just resize this one here and keep this one back here to keep an eye on the basically the memory usage. And you'll notice the windows become active as you pass the cursor over the windows. It's not it's not a case of like Windows or a lot of the modern uh, Linux window or desktop managers even um, uh, where you actually have to click on the window so it means that I could, although this window here is behind this one here I can just hover over this and actually type into this window without without bringing it to the front so I'm just going to do top there press Z and 1 and then just resize this up just so I can keep an eye on the 
usage of the cores as well as the memory usage as well to ensure that I'm not going to be running out of memory or anything like that. I shouldn't do with 16 gig. should be more than enough for all we need. So uh, next I'm going to start Firefox and I'm going to start this in the background so I'll put an ampersand after the command just so that I've got this command prompt available if I need to use it again. So you see it gives the um, PID number there and tells me it's job number one because it's running in the background. Then I've got the grid for the new window and I can just position that somewhere sensible like that. Okay, Firefox actually remembers its previous positions which is why it's just jumped away from where I've put it. So I'm going to put it over here. In fact, I'm going to do this the other way around. I'm going to, as I've done before, I'm going to put the window that we're typing stuff into copying and pasting stuff into on the right and the browser can go on the left so I'll just move these around a little bit hope that browser is not too small so let's get rid of these oh of course that shuts it down doesn't it <laughs> So let's restart that. So I can click this anywhere actually because as, as I say Firefox remembers where it was. Let's get an empty tab up. Okay. So I'm going to go into root on this one. This will be my main window for editing and then we'll use the other window for any uh, sorry, not for editing, I mean for updating, we use the other window for any edits we need to do without having to disturb what we're doing in this main window. So now for the search term, I'm going to look for uh, Gen 2 Plasma 5. Um, let me make this a little bit bigger. Hopefully that's big enough. Um, yeah, I think this first link is the one we want. <clears throat> so KD, if you followed the Linux from scratch video, you'll see that that's a, a comprehensive desktop manager, window manager, um, with a host of applications it comes with. Um, and also, if you remember, each individual application had to be built by hand. But what they've done in Gen 2 is they've stuck to the way that um, KDE used to be available. We used to be able to download um, a package which contains several related applications. For example, if you wanted the games package, it all, you could compile all the games all in one go, but now they're individual packages to pick and choose from. But uh, Gen 2 have got some virtual packages which group all those together. So you can either go the way... Um, with a new way of installing individual packages or you can go down the route which uh, is the old way of installing the bulk packages which is what uh, Gen 2 have kindly enabled us to do which, which is the way I install it, it's simpler um, rather than go around picking things. Um, in fact there is one huge uh, KDE meta package which installs everything but there's a lot of stuff that I don't use. I don't use the uh, PIM stuff, the per personal information management stuff. I don't use the SDK stuff. So um, I, I install most of the, these meta packages, but not all, not all of them. If I did, then I would use the uh, one single KDE meta package. Now, when I was testing this, um, the latest stage three seems to be um, have up to been updated quite a lot um, and these instructions are a little bit out of date um, so where it says as we as we go down here it says you can choose an appropriate profile so uh, if you remember we we've got a profile of no multi-lib because I, I wanted a pure 64-bit uh, installation um, but if you choose one of the desktop profiles with plasma in it then um, that will be a multi-lib profile as far as I'm aware so if I just do e select profile list 
you'll see we're still on no multi-lib so that means we may have a little bit more work to do setting up flags and so on the use flags because these profiles that's the idea of them they pre-configure certain flags and configuration to make the installation of the uh, desktop a lot simpler so we don't want to change that because we want to remain multi-lib and if you remember there was issues moving from one profile potentially issues to moving from one profile to another now as I said I think these instructions are a little bit out of date because when I was testing this um, these systems it says exactly one of and it gives us several options and exactly one of them gives us several options they seem to all be there the ones that were default or the recommended they seem to already exist so um, I'm going to check them anyway in case that was just something I did but it could be that we just need to skip over these so the first thing it says we need is a session tracker um, and there's something called eLogin D for use with or extracted from system D for use with OpenRC or other init systems so we're using OpenRC so we could use that one system D we're not using system D but it says if system if you are using system D you do not need to take any initiative here and console kit framework for defining tracking users login sessions and seats current default the desktop plasma, plasma profile so that's being that's the default for the plasma profile I'm going to follow that profile so we want to install console kit so let's see where that takes us to it takes us to console kit and this says it assumes that dbus has previously been configured so let's check that what the dbus link says and it says if we use enable the global dbus use flag um, it will pull in dbus automatically now I think I seem to remember when I did this it didn't actually do that so let's go to the gen 2 use index get the use index flag up uh, page up sorry and look for dbus yeah it is there so it could be that it was already enabled and that's why it didn't make any difference so as it's a global variable we're going to modify the etc portage make.conf in fact let me do this in the window behind because we're kind of probably going to be doing a few changes and it will mean swapping backwards and forwards so this is producing output from Firefox but it's just going to the console so just press enter there su minus root and vi etc portage make.conf so yeah dbus is already there so that means dbus will have already been installed or, or probably would have been installed so we don't need to do anything there this page lists all the um, flags that dbus uses and what they do if you want to enable stuff so let's run this command in here in fact there hasn't been any changes to um, the system so this shouldn't come up with anything new and it hasn't but so now let's do an emerge um, dbus one shot AV jobs equals six and again this should come up with no changes in the use flags and it hasn't it's still just got the X flag so we can see it's installed We've got an R there saying it's going to be rebuilt and there's no flags indicating that they're going to be changed and of course we could have actually done eQuery with that which might have been the better way to do this okay so this is showing that there's two different software packages called dbus and then in there they're in different locations so we actually need to specify the whole um, of that name like that to say we want to look at that particular one as opposed to that particular one there so this confirms that 
it's installed and it's got the X flag active and there's no other pending changes which is what this has told us as well and of course you can see it gives us descriptions here the one thing that is never always obvious is whether these are flags that are recommended for global use or whether they're just local flags so this is why I always have the use flag index to hand to, to cross reference to because what it means is this DRI if you activate it for one package it's very likely you want it activated for other packages because by activating it for one it probably has a dependency on another package where it also needs to be activated and another thing about local flags is you'd never put a local flag in the make.com because the context or meaning of that local flag could vary so for example the as an example if, if doc was a local flag it could mean in a local variable in one package that it installs um, help documentation within the program itself for example and in another package it could mean that it installs man pages or info pages so the context is slightly different and it could have a completely different meaning altogether even though it's the same use flag so you must never well, I say must never, it's, it, you could do it, but it would be very dangerous to put a local flag into the make.conf. Um, it's always best to check whether it, it, it belongs in make.conf or not if you do want to enable something globally. There are some flags which appear as if they should be uh, in the global, but they're actually local, but you have to go into each individual package and activate them uh, individually if you want, want those flags um, active. Okay, so we know that Dbus is installed. Is there any configuration? It says that we need to make sure Dbus is started and to add it to the RC update to make sure it starts at boot time. So let's just do an RC update on its own. And we can see that Dbus doesn't appear there. So that means not only is it not started, it hasn't it won't have been started automatically anyway at runtime so let's start it now okay so this has already started that's interesting and yet it's not in the RC update list so I wonder if there's some problem there so maybe something else has started it then it could be the X session the X window session started it but we've now started this or added it to the um, starter boot script so it means that if there's anything else that needs a dbus then um, that dbus will be running irrespective of whether we're running um, an X window session or not oh it says here look even without dbus uh, the run level will often get started by dbus dependent services so this, this should explain why dbus mysteriously gets started even though it's not been formally added to the system run level so that, that's what's happened here. It's running because something else has started it. So if we do ask the update on its own, you can see we've got it set now. And there's some information on how, how to use Dbus. Um, so see also EU Dev and UDev. I believe these are two other things we've got to look at. Perhaps they're not. Yes, they are. There they are, the next one. So we can... Uh, ignore that for the moment as we'll be coming to that so we'll go back to console kit and next thing we've got to do is check some kernel settings so let's quickly look at them here so go to the sources remember this is a sim link pointing at the ac actual current version that we're using make menu config Oh, these colours look a bit funny. Um, so we want to check in general setup, which is the first option, and we want to look for auditing support. There it is there, that's checked, that's okay. And then enable system call audit auditing support. Right, I can't actually see that there.
Right, now it could be that the kernel's changed, either that option's changed or it's enabled by default when this one's enabled, for example. So what we have to do is search for this and see if we can find the... There it is there, the looks of it. Find out what the uh, kernel... Um, the kernel flag is called. So if we go back to what was the first one called? Auditing support. Uh, there it is there. If you do help, this is the name of this flag. It, they all start config underscore. So this specific one is audit. So we need to find one according to this called config syscall. So it kind of concurs with what this description's all about. So if we exit that, do forward slash and type that in there. It's one called audit syscall. And it depends on audit equals yes and have arch audit syscall equals yes. And it actually says it's already set to yes. Um, and I believe, I believe because that has got a config in front of it, it's one that's been set automatically. Um, let me just double check that. If I type in audit, no, I'm not, not right there. These haven't got config in front of them. So somewhere, yeah, see this one hasn't got a location either, which makes me think it's like a hidden option. This one has actually got the location where you can find it in the menu, which is the one we've already set to yes. So we can prove that that's activated by this by doing deactivating that option and then searching for audit again. Audit syscall, yeah, it's gone to no now because it needs audit set to yes and audit syscall. So basically, after all that, it looks like the second option has now been hidden. It's not an option that we can turn on or turn off. And the fact that we've got the first one turned on and the other uh, option that was listed there, if I do look for it again. Basically, because of the option, this audit, is, which is this one here, auditing support, and this flag here, which is elsewhere, because they're both set to yes, it's set the audit syscall, which is this particular one. It's been set. So there's no changes to make there at all in the kernel. We're okay with that. Use flags. We need to add in console kit. So have we got that already? Let's check. Um, okay, so this Firefox is spewing stuff out, so let's quit and reload this. So we haven't got console kit in, so let's just check to see where that belongs. I imagine it would belong in the global file. Let's just check. Uh, in fact, it's not there anymore, which would tend to indicate it's not available to um, add in. Like I say, these these files seem to be a little bit out of date now. Console kit. Yeah, it should appear between command and core audio. So what we can do to verify whether it's required or not is to so oh, let's yeah let's leave that. If we go back to the root here, if we do an emerge uh, if we do an update emerge, but we'll set the use flag to use console kit. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Looks like the keyboard's reset. It's not using the uh, not using the UK settings now. <laughs> after those other changes are made. Um, but anyway, if we set the console kit to enabled and then do um, an update, so this this use will only run for this one command. 
and we'll see if there are any changes. It looks like console kit is not the use flag anymore. No, okay, so it is there and it is a change as well. So we will add it into and there it is being pulled in because of that one change. So we will add that into the make.conf. So add that in. So if we go back here and do the same command, we don't need the use flag now because we've actually hard hard coded it into the uh, make.com file. And again, it says the desktop profile implicitly implicitly enables console kit which is what we're trying to emulate at the end of the day. The difference being the fact that we're doing a build with solely 64-bit capability, no 32-bit no libraries. So there, there again is the same packages, that's okay. So let's get that installing. And yeah, basically we're doing this bit here now. We've updated use variables and we're doing um, an update to detect that change. And it says to have a console kit session created every time you use StarTex to make some changes to your X in it. I'll see. I'm not going to bother with that because we're going to be installing KDE and it takes care of all this sort of stuff for us. So I'm not going to worry too much about that. Okay, it's recommending us to do uh, an emerge depth clean, so let's do that. No, there's nothing there to do, so let's start the console kit. Okay, so this is already running, so maybe again something has triggered that to start all automatically. So let's just add it to the obviously update list so that it starts at boot time. Um, and it does actually mention you may see the oh the init script keeps failing, saying it's already running each time. Yeah, it says to fix this, please add console kit to boot instead of oh default on init. So it's saying that it may fail um when the machine is started, in which case to add it to the boot run level instead of the um, default run level. So that's something to remember if we do see problems. So that's console kit installed. Then we've got the device managers. Um, EU dev. UDEV and System D. So EUDEV is Gen 2's fork of UDEV with the goal of obtaining better compatibility is the default the desktop plasma profile. So that's the one we want to install. So let's center click on that one. And it gives some information there. And it lists the use flags for it and it tells us how to install it. So let's and it says to avoid registration, the world to set the one shot option to be used. So I would expect something to actually pick up on this EU dev at some point, which is why they're adding it as, a, as one shot. Which also means we've got to be careful if we do a depth clean because it will pick this up to clean. In fact, it's already been picked up by something. You can see it's not in the world set because it's not in bright green, but it already exists for for something because it's it's trying to rebuild there. So we don't actually need to install that. So we can ignore that. 
There's a service. Um, it says here the uh, run time configuration is UDEV, not EU dev. So let's just check RC update to see if it's in here. It's not under a UDEV, uh, but there it is UDEV, and it's at the sysinit run level, which is what it should be running at. And indeed, it shows here that they've run the RC update, and it already says that it's already in sysinit. So if we do the same, we'll get the same message, which we do. So there's a bit about migrating from UDEV to a UDEV, and there's some stuff about using predictable network interface names, so don't need to touch anything with that. So that's that one done. Uh, and then miscellaneous, we need dbus, we've done. Um, pole kit, we need to do, and u disks. So, pole kit, the policy kit, needs a dbus, we've got that. And it says also make sure you've got config foo text, well, yes, in the kernel. Without this option, the pole kit process may generate a high CPU. So, we can go into the kernel like we've just done and search for it, or we can just do a cat on the user source Linux and then actually look at the .config file which we should never edit but it's alright to look at it and then uh, grep for futex and you can see there's the config underscore futex equals yes so that setting in the kernel is um, is met so that's okay Once again, uh, we need to add a use flag for policy kit. So let's just double check that in the index. Policy kit, yeah, it's a global flag. So let's actually, I was just wondering if console kit is not a global flag anymore. Yeah, it looks like it isn't anymore. So this may be an exception possibly where it's a local use flag but it seems to um, do the same thing. So you may want to for completeness just to add that in as local variable and in fact I think I will do that. Things has not been indicated as a global variable so what I should do is remove it out of the make config I'm going to add in the poll kit one as it says here it's all policy kit sorry and then do another update that will show me what package it was that needs the local variable set okay so there's something broken here Right, same poll kit now needs console kit, so I'll need to set poll kit up with console kit. You see it's got the option, it's actually telling me it needs it. So I need sysauth poll kit. And that is console kit. So rerun this command. And hopefully it should come up. I think it was pan base actually as I remember was the other one. But it should tell me again because I've disabled it globally so it should say it wants to reinstall pan base without a uh, console kit. Yeah, there it is. 
It's a fact. I'm, I think I'm going to leave that as it is because that's how it was beforehand. Um, obviously, if we get any problems, then maybe I do need to install it globally, but it looks like it should be. Um, actually, no, I just remembered the profile says it's explicitly set, didn't it? So I'm doing this wrong. It, although it's, it's strange, actually, although it's a local uh, use flag, the fact that they've said they've set it as a uh, is, is explicitly set in the profile. That indicates it should actually be set as a global flag. So I'm going to go back and put this back now. And rerun this update. And it should just pull in these five packages here, the three new ones, and two updates for console kit and GVFS. Okay, we should add, so let's get those installing. While well, I was installing this, some information on some rules that you might want to or might need to um, modify. Uh, so I wanted to let users perform functions as administrators if, in, if they're in the wheel group. And there's one here to allow a specific user to mount disks. And then some usage on how to use a policy kit. <coughs> Thank you. 
Okay, so so update's been completed. Let's run the emerge depth clean. And that's clear. So there's just some usage if you're interested in learning a bit more about Polkit there. But apart from that, that's installed. So the next thing we've got to do is view disks. Um, now it does say this article's probably outdated, quite a bit outdated. Um, so I don't think there's much to do here, as remember, but we've got you uh, Dbus and Polkit installed, so that's okay. Let's check the kernel. We're going to be using your disks too. So let's go into the kernel. Check these settings. So the first one's under general setup, support for paging of anonymous memory, which is there, so that's okay. Next one's device drivers. Sure that we've got the old IDE drivers uh, support. So, yeah, sorry, support for the old device drivers uh, disabled, which is true. So file systems native language support is that down here? Yep. And we want NLS UTF-8. Uh, down the bottom. Yeah, it's down the bottom. Last one. So that's set, and then sudo file systems, tempfs virtual memory file system support, which is already set, and POSIX access control list, which is also set, so that's okay. No changes there again. So okay, we've got another use for U disks. We can just check that. There it is there, UDIS. So let's add that to the make.conf. Save that. And now we should be okay to do an update. Check if that's touched anything. There's some extra software there which I'm not going to install, but you may want to. Um, you may want, wish to look into those. Okay, so that's touched another file that we've already had reinstalled once and it looks like it pulls in a load of other programs just because of this one change so let's accept that and wait for that one to build
Okay, so that update is finished. We've got a couple of messages. Um, so the first one's to do is LVM. So let's make sure the LVM init script is in the run levels. So let's do let's do it in this window here. I'll see update. So LVM is not in the run level. So let's add that there. And let's start it as well. Okay. And then there's another issue here with a kernel setting that's not been set. So we need to go back into the kernel. And look for that DM crypt. So just type in forward slash, type in dm underscore crypt. And you can see it's in just device drivers, multiple devices, driver support, and device driver mapper support is the one we want to set. So device drivers, multiple devices, driver support, and then device Uh, was it this one here? Yeah, was it? Yeah, DM crypt. So crypt target support is the one we want to set. So press yes there to put the star in, and then exit. Yes to save it, and now let's make uh, to rebuild the kernel. Okay, so now we mount the boot because we have a separate partition that wasn't automatically mounted. We can install the kernel with make install. Then we can um, install the modules with make module underscore install. So we modules install. And now the next thing we need to do is something not seen yet is we need to rebuild any modules that are linked into the kernel and we've now got one of those um, which is the um, virtual box um, kernel modules so to do that we can do that with a merge and there's a world uh, a set called um, module hyphen rebuild and I normally put the settings on minus one AV jobs equals six as well and this will identify any packages that have got um, kernel modules that need to be rebuilt after a kernel change um, certainly if you're using the NVIDIA device drivers this is something you should be doing after each kernel um, kernel change and as you can see it's identified the VirtualBox guest edition so we need to reinstall that so I'll just wait a few minutes for this to be to be built now and installed
Okay, so those modules have been rebuilt. Um, last thing we need to do is to just rerun the grub mkconfig option. Probably don't need to do this, but I do this as a ma matter of habit so that it's never missed. Nothing, not, there'd be nothing worse than creating a new kernel and not updating the menu so you can't access the kernel without a little bit of um, editing at boot time. So grub hyphen mk on config minus o forward slash boot forward slash grub forward slash grub dot cfg so that's updated that I'm not going to reboot to take that change now it's only a minor change um, hopefully there won't be any issues with the fact that we've rebuilt the virtual box modules there shouldn't be because they're in use so they shouldn't disappear or have the new ones um, activated until we reboot so um, the next thing we need to do is to um, add our user indeed any users that uh, will be running X Windows uh, sorry KDE to the plug dev group which will allow the uh, UDIS to function better so let's type groups kernel text you see it hasn't got the plug dev group so we can use this command add in the user okay plug dev does not exist so maybe it's not been created yet for some reason maybe there's some package that would normally have been installed that hasn't been installed so that's something maybe to do at any time that the um, plug dev um, is required for example I think USB um, access to USB sticks would um, if we installed USB utils that would uh, install the plug dev group in fact there there is uh, some examples of a, a USB device and how to activate it and so on so that's that one done let's go back to the KDE wiki so we've done these prerequisites the next uh, I wonder if that comes to think of it because normally I don't really install KDE in, in the way we're doing it I'm doing this in a more logical fashion um, it could be why some of these already installed because we've already installed X server so um, that, that could explain quite a few of these things already existing but that's not a problem um, as you see if we go to this X server page it's the same ones we were running from yesterday and um, as you see it's got this link to the XOR guide so you see how it all sort of links together so we did all this yesterday in the previous video um, so it's saying about some package conflicts here KD Plasma and applications cover many dependencies. Some of the dependencies will predetermine package choices where otherwise there will be options to choose from. So one of them is FFmpeg. By default, Qt Web Engine has use system FFmpeg enabled, making it depend on video, media video FFmpeg. Users preferring media libia, video libav for the rest of their system will need to switch off that flag. So um, you may or not may not remember in the previous video I actually modified the make.com because I've been aware this has been an issue for quite a while and I disabled libav so we're using ffmpeg and in fact if I'm not mistaken ffmpeg is a global use flag anyway so what we could do is add that into the yeah there it is there is that that into the use flags now and that will um, cast in concrete the fact that we want to use FFmpeg and not libav so let's do another update just see what that pulls in
Right, it hasn't activated anything at the moment, so that's fine. The other one we need to look at is JPEG. Uh, it says Qt Web Engine depends on libjpeg turbo and gen 2 is recommended default over jpeg anyway so again jpeg is a global flag we can enable that as well uh, jpeg there it is jpeg support so let's put that in And again, rerun the update command to see what changes there are, if any. So yeah, there is some changes there. And I would have expected, it says here that libjpeg turbo is the default. I would expect that to obviously be installed as um, it's not being installed here even though we're installing JPEG. So let's just have a quick look at that. We can use eQuery. Uh, let's look at use flags and libjpeg turbo. And it looks like it's not actually installed. Um. Let's see what Merge tells us. Oh, they're both installed. That's interesting. Oh right, those. This one's a virtual. So we have got libjpeg turbo installed. Okay. So let's um, get those updates complete for the JPEG. While well, that's running, we we'll just look at the rest of this document. So Plasma is the first part that's going to be installed um, and it says here what the different versions that currently are available in the Gen 2 repository and we're just going to stick with a stable version and not, not going to use the testing or, or the live version. The only package which is .999 is the live upstream version, the current version. It says be sure to choose a Plasma profile. Well that may be for some use flags that need to be set to allow Plasma to build. And we've got a Plasma Meta pack package which provides a full Plasma 5 desktop configuring configurable wide world of use flags. And as you can see there's quite a few there so there may be some of these that we want to set. Now there is a Plasma desktop but it only provides a very basic te desktop le leaving the users free to install only extra packages they require or figure out missing features on their own um, and it does say that if you do install desktop it will miss important packages so it's recommended to install Plasma desktop so let's just do an emerge that clean here again this shouldn't have affected anything to clean up because it was just like adding functionality in so let's do uh, oh yes, this, this this may be important if you're a KDE user. Um, there's a use flag here to set the classic way that the system settings is uh, displayed. So I'm going to set that because I'm currently quite happy to use that. So we go to package.use. It's under KDE Plasma, so let's insert another category. Setting system settings classic. So let's oh, open there. Let's 
strange. That's, that's better. Um, so if we now go to it says to recompile with a new use flag seconds. Well, we haven't installed anything yet, so let's just go straight for the emerge plasma dash meta minus uh, av jobs equals six. Let's time this, see how long this takes. So you see this is a, a meta package so it pulls in a basically bulk load of uh, files. There's quite a few there. And normally what I'll do is if it's installing some new software, I won't do it now because like I said uh, in the previous video, I want to concentrate on getting the job of installing done and then if there's any tuning to be done with the flags I'll do that later but normally when I'm installing a new system I'll, I'll look through and see what one to turn on before I, I build this um, before I do the installation because it just makes it easier and quicker to get the system up and running but I'll, I'll, I'll keep these things separate just to make it clearer what's going on um, so it looks like that flag's being turned on by something else because it's not something we've set. There's no reason why that should suddenly be reloading when we've done loads of checks already for the same reason that one there. So you can see there's lots of support libraries initially, a load of Perl libraries. Then looks like QT's being installed, or a load of QT libraries there, followed by a few more Perl modules and then all the KDE frameworks libraries followed by the plasma libraries so whereas in Linux from scratch we installed the frameworks as one session if you like and then plasma, plasma was a second session and then the third session was the actual KDE applications um, the plasma package meta package on gen 2 incorporates the framework and the plasma all into one one lump um, and in fact further than that it, it includes also the QT system which again was another big big session so at the end of all these packages there's 260 to install a gigabyte of updates is quite a hefty chunk um, it's got these uh, use flags which need to be added to allow certain packages looks like mainly their QT some QT some plasma so we need to look at each one of these and find out if they're global flags if they are add them to the make which may introduce other changes and if they're local flags use flags to add them to the package.use so what we do with anything like this is you start at the top do one at a time because by enabling this it could affect the uh, compile sequence and it may be that some of these don't actually get uh, built or re are required because you've, you've actually fulfilled one of these dependencies at the top so we'll do one at a time so let's look up PCRE 16 in the global use flags so PCRE it's only PCRE there not PCRE 16 so that needs to be added as a local flag so devlibs so that so back to this window we'll do no and we'll rerun that command It'll just be a little bit of work getting these use flags sorted out and eventually it will all come together and we'll be in a position where we can just get the build running. 
So the next one is text against XMRTR. I don't think text is the global. No, it isn't. So let's add that one in next. App text. So now again, you can see already this error at the end has changed to the previous one because we're doing these updates one by one. And that's why I say don't just jump in and do bits here and there, do just work down in order um, and deal with each issue from the top down. So you can see already we've, we've reduced this to a page, a screen full now. So next one, XKB. Oh, this is the one that was in green. I, I did wonder why it appeared. So it's actually telling us that it needs needs to be added. So XKB. So that's not there. So we need to add this in as an individual local use flag. X11 nibs. So again, back to here, do no, and record a command. Okay, so now we've got Vorbis and Og. I'm pretty sure Vorbis and Og are global flags. So Vorbis, yeah, there it is there, and Og. Oh, looks like that's, ch oh, sorry. Uh, there it is there, yeah, don't know my alphabet. So Vorbis and Og can be added to make.conf. That's Og and Vorbis. And in fact, it's probably best to copy and paste these because a spelling mistake would mean that that flag just gets ignored. You, you don't get a warning that there's a, a use flag that's not recognized, which is a bit unfortunate, but it's probably best to copy and paste those. So again, no for that. So again, like, like I say, this, this error after we've done no, continually changes because it's trying to resolve issues that haven't been resolved yet. Okay, so now we've got Zlib mini zip, so mini zip LM. No, there's no mini zip, so that's a local flag. Sys libs. You can see how this package.use get starts to grow in size. Um, can be several screens long depending on how much information you add in here. And again, that's the reason why I use the single package use flag rather than individual config files because uh, so, as I said if if you have um, a use flag for example that console kit which is on many packages and you need to either remove it or change it or look for it, it it's simpler to have it all in one text file and search just within that text file rather than writing some um, some sort of multiple command on the bash, bash prompt to, to search for a that text across different files. Right, we're getting these down now, so that's good. So we've got Qt Core wants ICU. And I think ICU is a global flag, yes it is. So let's go back to make.conf and add ICU in.
Okay, so the next one I've got is cups, which again I think is a global fag to enable printing. Yep. And of course, if you decided you didn't want printing, then the thing to do here would just be to add uh, that line into your package.use because it's Qt print support must have cups enabled. But if you didn't want anything else to do with cups, then just leave it at that. If you do want cups, if you do want printing support, then the best place is make.conf because it, as I say, it enables other packages to have that functionality, which is likely what you want, likely to be what you want. So let's insert cups there. Rerun this. Okay, now we want EGL for Qt GUI. EGL. So that's not there, so that needs a specific local entry. Dev Qt. Oh, what did I do there? And then let's rerun that once more, or well, at least once more for the Wayland option for Mesa. I think Wayland's a global variable, global uh, use flag, sorry. Yeah, it's still there, so Wayland, yeah, there it is. So let's again add that to the make.conf. Right, so this should get rid of this message here. Yep, that's it there. That's all the extra flags that we've needed, had needed to uh, add. So as I say, if we'd been using a proper plasma profile those flags would likely to have been already been set so let's just have a quick zip down here again everything looks fine okay so what I'm just going to do is see if I can get the because I've, I've turned the screensaver off on my host system um, but unfortunately I noticed before when it was compiling the screensaver came on for well I don't know if it's TWM or for X window so I'm just going to look to see if there's a quick way to turn that off save me having to wiggle the mouse every few minutes Right, okay, so it looks like there's a command called x set s off, is what I need to type in. So I'm hoping that's going to work. x set q shows what I did. Alright, oh, okay. Oh, this looks quite interesting. Never done this before. So screen saver, prefer blanking, yes. So it looks like, 
that hasn't worked. Time zero cycle. Uh, and then accept. Let's have a quick look at this. Screen saver parameters, option S. Option S. So it looks like um, the on off function, the on off flag simply turns the screensaver functions on or off. Okay. So let's try accept S default to return it to its default setting. And view, oops, view that. So prefer blanking yes. All oh, right, okay. So what it's done, it's changed the timeout to zero, which probably means never, never blank. So it does seem to have done done something then. So accept S off. Query it, yeah. The timeout's gone to zero, so hopefully the screen won't come on and uh, it will stay up all the time. But I'll, I'll stay around just to keep an eye on it just in case. So we're ready to go with the KDE Plasma and Frameworks installation. As I say, this will create the environment, it won't install any KDE packages, but that's a separate installation uh, which is part of the, or the rest of this um, wiki page. So I'll start this going now then, and probably be a few hours, I imagine.
Okay, that looks like it might have finished installing. Yep, that looks okay, so what we've got to do is make some changes. So we've got to add um, a kernel setting for fuse. So let's deal with that one. So we go into the config editor. Let's look for fuse underscore fs in file system. Yeah, file system. So it's down here. That's that one there, I think. Yep, yeah, we'll just check that. Identification is the same. So I'll we'll add that in. Let's quickly check there's no others. Yeah, there's one there for USB printers, but I'm not going to bother with that because um, so I'm not using USB. Okay, so that means we can generate another kernel. Make uh, let's just check. We've got the boot mounted shipper. Yep, make install make modules underscore install emerge module oops, module hyphen rebuild minus one over a minus one jobs equals six. While that's installing, I'll go to this window and see if there's anything else we can do. So WPA subsequent has been installed. It's probably like Network Manager been installed, something like that. Yeah, there's Modem Manager as well. So this is saying about adding user to the plug dev, dev group so not sure if that'll be here now no it's not um, so I think that was under you this type that that command Yes, yeah, so let's see if this will work again now. I'm not sure if there's going to be a plug dev group or not, but let's try it. Yeah, that's worked now. So obviously something's installed that's created that, that group. <clears throat> okay, so let's put it down to here again. The paper, so we need to configure this with the size of paper used. So here in the UK, the default letter size, or sorry, page size is A4. So I'm going to put this in with an A4 setting. So there's one here about some fonts being installed. So they're the Google fonts, I believe. So I'm going to take a look at those you select font config list 
So they start with 66, so there they are, those three there. So I need to enable 32, 33 and 34. So you select font config, enable 32, 33 and 34. And we can rerun the list just to check that off, set the right ones. And I have, that's, that's okay. <coughs> Again, network manager has been installed. It talks about the plug dev group, so we're right with there. Not going to bother with the USB printer. Just some information about some header files by the looks of it being empty. Uh, some information about K Wallet, which is like a wallet for encrypted keys or passwords, I think. Um, so, some information about configuring SDDM. Media player support install app misc media player info. So that might be something useful. Let's try installing that. So we can do on this window now because that just finished. Let's just run the grub MK config. And then emerge. Okay, so it's a new package. Then there's two additional packages here recommended for reading or indexing of Word, PowerPoint and Excel files, CatDog and LibXLS, so let's put those in as well. So they could be useful. CatDoc and LibXLS. Okay, we can both go in. Small stuff about the K water again, um that's something not gonna really worry about the uh things like that. So there's something about if you're using a um agent for uh key sharing the looks of it. There's something about debugging. So there's more information about installing some um, tools for information for KInfo. So I um, wasn't planning on installing Samba um, and FS, uh, neither that, but um, we'll stick that in as well just for um, completeness really. NFS Utils and Samba. So this is saying that open LDAP, if you've got CSX, CXX enabled, you need Sazzle. So we'll add this to package.use. Just type in Sazzle. Um, let's just check it's not a global flag actually. Right, it is, so it doesn't belong in here. Make.conf and we'll add Sazzle. Okay, so it looks like that's ready to go. And 
last thing we've got is about the startup agents again. So all we need to do now is just wait for NFS and Samba to build. So just reading the um, next few things that need to be done. Uh, there's some things with some widgets which are in Caddy Plasmaridons, but that's already been pulled in by the meta package, so we don't need to do that. Um, talks about STDM, which is a simple desktop display manager. Again, it's pulled in automatically, so we don't need to worry about that. Then it says um, about the system tray. Um, uses something called status notify specification for sys tray icons. Not all applications have been ported to the new system, some workarounds exist. And Plasma 5 as a means to convert old X embed based system tray icons to status notify icons. So legacy support is enabled by acting legacy sys tray for KD Plasma, Plasma Meta, which is in KD Plasma X embed SNI proxy. So let's just do a little dry run of that. Uh, let's do e query uh, u plasma meta. So it looks like legacy sysstrace has already been enabled automatically, so we don't need to do anything with that. K wallet, as so I'm not worrying about that. And in fact, there's a config file there to disable the K wallet system completely. So if I become kernel kind of text temporarily and edit that file, which won't exist at the moment, let's add this setting in and we can completely forget about it. So some information there about running the SSH and GPG agent, which again, not worrying about. Um, GUI applications root privileges is warning there. And the next thing we move on to is the applications.
Okay, so NFS tools and Samba have been updated. Let's just check the output from that run. Um, I was saying about some permissions that differ from those that Mailbase wants to set it to. If it did not change on purpose, consider running. So I'm not aware of changing anything. So let's run these two commands in. Some stuff that I've held that there and some sample stuff, so there's not really anything of interest for us. Um, there's just one thing I want to check. How oh, big this window actually? Yeah, it's all gone. Um, there was something when we installed SDDM about the configuration file having changed. I'm not sure if it was this one or not, but let's have a look at it. Um, I just remembered that we need to do some configuration for SDDM. Let's just have a look at this one. Oh yeah, maybe it's this one then. Um, yeah, we need to <clears throat> add this if it's not already there to the configuration file. Oh, it is display command equals. Uh, that's interesting, it's already there, but it's got a different path. To select the correct key map on the login screen, add the following lines to the ETC. So that would override in theory, although it said not to use that one, I think. Um, I'll install SDDM again just to see that message, hopefully, it will show it. As I said before, some of these wiki pages are a little bit out of date, so um, that's the reason why I'm re reinstalling this, just to see the message, although some messages only appear the first time you install the package, so I'm hoping this is not one of those packages. And I just want to check what the paths were and exactly what it says. I'm, I'm pretty sure it said don't put anything in this, or, or it might have been that it doesn't install this file anymore, so I just want to reread it right so it says starting with 0 0.18.0 .0, which is what we're on sddm no longer installs etc sddm.conf alright it does say use it to override specific options and the defaults are now found in that file there, right? So this looks like it is up to date and correct then. So let's edit that file, do an insert, and add in these two lines. Then we have to save that and create a directory and then we actually edit this setup file. Boom. So it looks like Looks like that was set up. GB and US keyboard maps. And then we have to change ownership so that execution for everyone that looks of it. Yep. Then 
then we have to set SDDM as the display manager. So this means this is this is similar to what we did with LFS. We set the um, display manager to um, was it LXDM? I can't remember which one it was now. Um, you just tell StarTex basically what display manager is you want to use. Um, Conf .dxdm. So we don't want XDM. We want SDDM. And then we need to add XDM to the default run level. And we won't start it now because it will mess up everything I'm doing here. And it says as a general configuration in Plasma 5, I think this would have been installed because we installed the meta package, but let's check just to be sure. Oh, it's one shot as one word. Yep, it's already there, so we don't need to do that. Um, so some things about um, if SDM takes a long time to show the greeter, and some stuff to do there, some permission and stuff. Um, it does actually say about adding the SDDM user to the video group, so let's preempt that and just add SDDM straight away. And there's some things about missing users there, so that should be it really for SDDM. So I've just, just remembered that SDDM needed some configuration, so I'll just jump back there. Um, there was also something about... I think there was something more about... Oh, I missed something. Um, I'll just jump back in there again. Oh no, that was that's okay. Yep, that's all there is. So the next bit is applications, but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to restart the machine to um, pick up the new kernels and also to test whether SDDM uh, starts up as a display manager and also that we can actually log in and that we get the KDE desktop as well. So I'm going to do Control Q on Firefox and Control D on all these others. So that's worked. So I'll log out of this one, log in as root. And do a reboot. Yep, that looks good. We've got a this is STDM. Not sure if the key will know. I didn't think that would work. It didn't work when I was testing it. I think that needs a little bit more configuration. But uh, shouldn't normally be a problem with the login screen. So I'm going to log in with my password. And with a little bit of luck, we'll get the KDE desktop. Yep, there it is. So one thing I can do now, which didn't seem to work before was to turn off the um, uh, screen saver. So there's two parts I've got to do. I think it's this bit. No, it's not this one. Well, power is one of them. Right, okay, yeah, that's something I hadn't thought of. I'm running a 
uh, like a testing version of VirtualBox. I should be using GuestBox editions that match that version. Um, I went to 6.06, 6.0.6 because of the video problems where the image doesn't resize correctly, or although it did this time when I rebooted. Um, and because I'd modified some of the virtual machines in testing that, I didn't really want to go back to an older version in case there were some incompatibilities. So um, I'll do that on the next session because I want to bring this session to a close now. It's um, been going for five and a half hours nearly. Um, so that's something I'll do uh, start the next session is just to update the guest editions to ensure there's no uh, incompatibility as they're at different versions. So I'm going to turn off energy saving and is it display monitor. Let's apply that. Display enabled. This will lock the screen off to five minutes. Right, I can't seem to remember. Let me check on my own system. Um, no, I'll have to try that and see. I thought there was two settings that need to be changed, so. Um, oh, uh, actually, it's this lock screen, that's what it is. There's nothing to do with the power settings, that's what it, the other one is. Okay, so that's that done. So, um, if I go to the menu, you see there's not that many. Well, web Firefox is there, obviously, because we've installed that, but there's not that many applications that's that events we installed last time and there's that menu we looked at for lib bzip2 um, so all the kde applications are missing so what i'll do is i'll um, install them next time as i say this session has been going on for a little bit long um, and that, that will complete the KDE installation then. And then I'll go ahead and install some um, other packages which are not uh, associated with KDE, but the sort of packages that you may want for like an office type uh, environment, as I did with Linux from scratch. So I'll be doing LibreOffice. Um, I'll install Chrome and Opera, two more browsers, which uh, is always, always good to have. Uh, a spare browser or two in case you find you've got a website that's not compatible with the one you're using, although that happens less these days. Um, and a few other packages that I can think of. Um, one other thing I'll do before I carry on here is I'll set the keyboard if it hasn't already been set because that may cause me problems. So I'll go to input devices, um, Layouts, yeah, there's no keyboard allocate. Oh, right, okay, it's already defaulted to UK, so that's good. So it's probably picked that up from the L10N environment variable in the um, make.conf. So I shall check that now. Uh, 
No, it's not actually working. So, does it need to be activated? Preview. Advanced. So let me apply that and now let's try. No. Uh, regional settings. Right, it could be that uh, that's correct. That's the correct time. May need to reboot then after making those settings. Um, let's set the dictionary here. I'm not even sure I've got console, have I? Right. So it's load X term. Yeah, that's not working correctly either. So I'll sort that out in the next session. Um, but for now, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. Goodbye.